Hey, I'm just going to run through really quickly some of the important threads of chapter six. Um, I think this video would be good to watch um, either after or before watching the other videos I've recorded. I will probably put two copies of this video up, so if you've already seen it, um, you can skip this one. But the important threads are this. Um, one is what are the operations of a computer? What does a computer do? And we've got here that it stores, retrieves, and processes data. Uh, the second thing is to do with the computer's machine language. So these are very low-level things that do the storing, retrieving, and processing of data in little tiny increments. It's a set of instructions. The hardware is built to recognize and execute those instructions. So literally, it's combinations of bits on and off signals that get kind of fed into the CPU um, from a data bus. So uh, machine language programs are uh, text, uh, well, they're files, and the contents of those files are these, a sequence of these binary language instructions that get loaded into uh, memory and then executed. So it's a, a series of instructions in binary form. Uh, the next uh, big uh, thing that we talked about is we introduced this PEP8 virtual computer with uh, one register, the accumulator, and um, uh, instructions composed of two parts. One is a um, op, uh, op code, or instruction part, and, and the other is uh, two bytes of, of data of some sort that go with the instruction. Um, this uh, PEP8 virtual machine we have a number of problems in the chapter. You'll be asked to do some, and you'll learn a little bit. Um, you, you've become a little bit of an expert at PEP8 assembly and machine code programming, not because we want you to go out and become assembly or machine code programmers, but because we want you to have an intimate, um, yes, maybe painful, but uh, you get sore by working out, and you should be getting sore by working out with these assembly and machine code programs, and that makes you stronger. Um, in general. So um, we, we've gone through that, we introduced that machine. I hope you've all downloaded it and have worked through the programs. I went through, after going through the machine code in PEP8, I went through the machine, uh, the assembly language for PEP8, and uh, we introduced these mnemonic codes uh, that replace the binary numbers. And uh, I even showed you kind of some other shortcuts um, for for getting data into an assembly language program, which is much easier than the machine code. Um, and then we went through pseudocode. So um, pseudocode is uh, not something that the computer understands. It's something that you as a human being understand. Um, the pseudocode is what you write on your lab book, your notebook, um, that people use to express programs. And by the way, um, research papers, if you ever have to go and, and find some sort of a research paper that implements something, I've got one on my desk, let's see if there's pseudocode, I don't see any pseudocode in this, but when somebody's presenting uh, a, a solution in a research paper of any sort, which you might have to read, they're going to generally show it as a pseudocode or a flowchart or both. So these are different ways to diagram uh, a process on a piece of paper. Then we talked about, uh, this is a, a big one, testing uh, programs. Um, you want to really irritate your instructor, submit a program without testing it. Um, it's the very first thing that your instructor is going to do. Um, it's, he expects you to have come up with the right tests to make sure that your program is correct. We don't have to give you anything. Um, we specify verbally how the program should behave, and you can write test cases. And if you find yourself having a hard time knowing what the test case should be, then you start asking questions on the forum or of your instructor until you know what the input to desired output um, should be. And you have a plan to test your script. The grader obviously has a plan to test your script as well. Um, so all programs must be tested. Um, 
code coverage testing is, is nice. Um, data coverage testing is, is what you do when you can't actually look at the code to figure out where the branches are. And um, yeah, and we talked about also, um, it's nice if you can automate the tests, um, but you don't have to. Um, in, in the, with a lack of automation, you should at least run through it multiple times. But what happens is without automation, or at least without a written script that you can diligently follow and check off, you'll forget some stuff. And uh, yeah, that wraps up chapter six, introducing you to um, the fundamentals of how computers uh, execute code in machine code. Uh, next, we'll talk a little bit about general problem solving strategies in the next chapter, and you will get to, um, eventually we'll be writing code um, in a high level language, so high level language, which is much closer to pseudocode, but not. Um, it, it's something that you type, and we're going to be looking at, um, I believe in this course, we're going to be looking at Python, because that's what our industrial advisory board wants you to know. This is something that's comfortable enough that people enjoy using it. Um, most people dip into assembly um, because they must um, and would prefer to work in a high-level language where ideas are much easier to express concisely. All right. Um, next video, I will probably walk through some of the problems, uh, not giving you a solution, but um, explaining what I'd like you to do.